What's going on YouTube? So as you know, Honda offers a wide variety of crossovers in every shape and size for every type of need. And one of their most recent additions is this Honda Passport. This fits between the CRV and Pilot, but with a more rugged flair than either of those models. 2021 adds some more standard equipment, so without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump into the review of this 2021 Passport. So of course, with this Passport, you can probably tell right from the beginning, this is related to the Honda Pilot, but it does have quite a bit of styling enhancements done to it to give it a more rugged persona than that model. The main thing you're gonna notice is right here in the front with this face. Uh, Honda has given this a basically a large black trim piece that runs all the way from the top down here to the bottom, giving it kind of a mask look to it. And then that top panel there is going to be gloss black finish and run all the way over here to your headlights. Now that we're over here at the headlights, let's talk about those. You are actually going to have standard LED headlights on all models, but they're going to be just the LED low beam for the uh, LX and the EXL. The top two trim levels, those will come with full LED headlights with that new crystal design. And then regardless of which trim you choose, you will have LED fog lamps down here at the bottom. Now one of the cool aspects about this Passport is the fact that they include 20 inch alloy wheels standard on every model, even the base trim level. This EXL trim level gets this design that you see here with the gray finish. And then taking a look at our mirrors, they are going to be finished in a gloss black. We do have heating and blind spot monitoring. If you want power folding, that requires going up to the touring and auto dimming requires going up to the elite. So here at the side, you're gonna once again notice that this is of course related to the Honda Pilot. It is a little bit shorter for passport duty though. And we have of course blacked out all the wheel arches for to make it look a little bit more rugged. Now let's talk about the rear design of the passport. Um, you're gonna have the same design as you would have last year. So as far as what makes that up, we have this black piece that goes all the way through. Once again, it's this black plastic to give it a rugged look. The taillights are going to be partially LED, the uh, brake light portion is LED and the turn signal is not, and your reverse light is down here. As far as the rear diffuser area, we are going to have dual exhaust outlets. Now as far as your safety systems for the Passport are concerned, you're going to have the entire suite standard across the board. Great feature to have, especially for a family vehicle like this. So it's going to be forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, as well as lane keeping assist, auto high beams, and adaptive cruise control. Well guys, that's going to be all for the rugged exterior design of this Passport. Now let's go ahead and check out the inside, but before we do that, you know what would really help me out? If you hit that subscribe button down below, it's completely free, and all it's going to do is give you a few notifications for our most recent car content. So please, please, please go ahead and do that. Walking up to the Passport, every version will have a standard smart entry system as well as remote start. And then getting inside is as simple as reaching behind the handle. Alright, and taking a look inside of this latest 2021 example, you won't really notice any significant changes. Uh, it continues to have the same type of cabin design as the previous model years as well as the Honda Pilot. Now as far as your different material and color options, all but the base LX trim level will come standard with this leather seating, and all but the base LX trim level will have the choice between black or gray color options. Taking a look over here at the door trim, you'll find the same material up here. So we have a nice leather padded area with a stitching detail. It is soft touch above that and along the upper part of the dash. And then we have a piece of gray trim that runs through here. All but the base LX will come with two-person memory seating, and then your front two windows are one-touch auto up and down. Okay. 
Once again, all but the base LX model will come with this 10-way power adjusting seat with two-way lumbar support. And like I was mentioning, we do have the leather on this specific model. And as you can see, it does have a nice perforation design in the middle with little diamonds. Now, as far as the material selection inside this cabin, it is pretty good. So across our rubber dash, this is gonna be finished in a solid touch plastic with a stitching detail. As we move down to the lower area, we do have a nice piece of silver trim that runs through here. Coming down, we have more of that silver trim. It is gonna be hard touch along the sides, but everything does fit together extremely well in that typical Honda way. Now start up, put your foot on the brake and press the illuminated button. Let's take a look at these gauges to start off with. Uh, this continues to be a seven inch display right there in the middle, which makes up the majority of what you have. Although you do have some analog gauges on the outside edges. And then you can use the steering wheel mounted controls to go through all different kinds of information, including things like your all wheel drive system torque split. As we pull back to the steering wheel, you'll continue to have a nice leather wrap steering wheel if you have leather seating. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be manual tilt and telescoping on all models. And if you want heating, you will have to choose the Elite. But let's go into interior storage because this is one place where this Passport is very impressive. Of course, like we already mentioned, it shares bones with the three row Honda Pilot. So you have that same storage solution of the fold down armrest. So you have all this as empty space and then you can slide this back right here. Then you have just an absolutely cavernous center console here. Tons and tons of space. There are some connections down there at the bottom as well. And let's get out our big stack of coupons. Check that out. We can set those completely flat. Uh, no folding or anything. So that's certainly very impressive and better than the competition. Up in front of that, we got two deep cup holders. We have a little storage shelf here. We've got another rubber line storage area down below that and a few more connections as well. And pulling back here to the shifter next, this is Honda's electronic shifter. Of course, you're just gonna press the D for drive. You can press again on that to activate the sport mode. And you do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel for every trim level. For reverse, pull back on that trigger. And uh, when you do, you will see this standard backup camera up here on all the models. It does have active trajectory as well as a few different views you can choose between. And the mirrors also tilt down in reverse to help you see the parking lines better. Now in this panel up here, you'll notice, uh, of course, your climate controls. You have a three zone automatic climate control setup standard across the board. Very simple to use with these toggles and large physical buttons everywhere. You even have physical buttons to control your rear climate control as well. And then down below that, we have three stage heated seats on all but the base model. Okay, now let's go next to the audio system. So there's two different audio systems. This being a lower end trim level, we have the 152 watt seven speaker sound system versus the 550 watt 10 speaker premium sound system. But we'll go ahead and give the standard system a sample. sound quality is actually pretty good. Uh, I thought that it would be a little bit worse than it is given the low speaker count, but it, it does fill up this cabin nicely. Okay, so now we are here at the display. This is actually one of our 2021 updates. Um, and that's the fact that we now have the eight inch display standard on every single model. So previously, if you got the LX, you got this weird little five inch display. Now you're gonna get this uh, eight inch display as standard equipment. Now, as far as the system itself, this is the newest version of the Honda Link with these nice and large tiles. Uh, you do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Those are going to be included standard on every single trim level. And then you have navigation if you choose the Touring trim level or the Elite. 
Now moving on up here, we do have a frameless auto dimming mirror with three Homelink Universal remotes on all but the base LX. And also on all but the base LX, we have a power sunroof. This is just a standard size unit. There is not a panoramic option. Now the Passport is a very family friendly vehicle because this is of course based on the Honda Pilot. So the second row is certainly very, very nice. Let's talk about the space first. We're looking at 40 inches of both leg and headroom, which has placed it right on par with that of the typical thing in the segment like the Hyundai Santa Fe or the Nissan Murano. And behind the seating position I have, I would say probably five inches of rear leg room. My feet can slide up underneath the seat. Of course, just very comfortable with the Passport. Now turning our attention towards the features. Uh, we have vents here in the center. If you go for a higher end model, you will also retain the climate controls from the Pilot. Uh, the Touring and Elite are also going to throw in heated rear seats. It's not on this model. However, we do still have two charging USBs. Over here on the door, the EXL trim and above, we'll have these rear window sunshades. And we also have some cup holders to maximize the functionality of this rear seat. Coming up to the tailgate, we are going to have a standard power lift gate on the EXL trim and above. It is also foot activated on the top two trims of the Passport. Now, as far as the space itself is concerned, we're looking at 42 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats. That expands all the way up to 78 cubic feet if you fold the seats down. Once again, this is going to put it at the very top end of the se segment. It's significantly larger than the Chevy Blazer. Um, so there's a lot of space back here. That's, of course, the benefit of sharing the pat pilot um, platform here is of course that now as far as the finishings we have uh, our seats that do fold 60 40 split we have a nice button here on the side to fold them and then we have a cubby here on the left side as well as a 12 volt outlet and if we lift up the floor we have some additional space up under here if the car area is not enough now your passenger seat is going to be power adjusting. That's quite nice for the second to base trim. And then if we open up the glove box here, uh, this is decently sized. It's not massive. It's pretty much okay, but it certainly fits in our coupon. So that's of course the number one requirement that it needs to do. And then up top, we have a very wide sun visor. We have lighting as well as a mirror and it does detach as well as extend. And just like that, we are almost up to 60 miles per hour before we're interrupted with this red light. So with the Passport, you've got that, that traditional Honda 3.5 liter V6 engine. It's making 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. Strong. Yeah, yeah. it certainly is a nice strong motor, plenty of power for a vehicle like this. Um, you know, some competitors to this are offering four-cylinder engines, turbo four-cylinder engines. Uh, this, so I think it's pretty nice that this does come standard with a nice naturally aspirated V6, no matter which trim level you choose. Yeah, I think that'll be a big uh, pro to a lot of you guys is that right there, because that V6 has a lot of refinement to it, um, which may not be able to be said about a turbocharged four-cylinder that you'll find in some of the competition. And speaking of that refinement, you know, we've been speaking about this the entire review. This is based on a pilot. So um, all of the signature pilot characteristics that we absolutely love come back into this ride quality. Um, this is incredible. One of the best riding vehicles money can buy. Um, it's super comfort focused. The seats are amazing. Um, I mean, <laughs> there's just really nothing else to say about it besides this is great. And let me go ahead and grab that sun level reading. Fifty six and a half decibels. Really, really solid reading. Uh, it's about what I expected. It's even pretty windy outside today, and this thing just really is. 
A plus. Now as far as the transmission is concerned, we have a 9-speed automatic transmission that's going to be across all of the models. And then you do have standard front-wheel drive, optional torque vectoring, all-wheel drive, except for on the Elite where it is all-wheel drive exclusive. Let's go ahead and do the air ball and slam dunk, both of which have to do with this cabin. Um, so we'll start out being positive. Let's go ahead and do the slam dunk. We're just going to say the overall comfort, how really amazingly comfortable this is. Uh, a couple years ago, we actually had this car for uh, several days at a press event in Yosemite, and it really f just meets your lifestyle needs super great. Um, so that's going to be our slam dunk. And then our air ball is just going to be um, maybe overall design and some of the technology in here is starting to show its age. You know, this is a uh, based on the pilot that came out quite a few years back and really nothing has changed so uh, it would be nice for Honda to maybe work on this a little bit. And as far as your fuel economy is concerned since there is only one engine the front drive model is going to be 20, 25, 22. All-wheel drive takes it down to 21 miles a gallon. And we can go ahead and discuss the pricing. So the Sport's going to be thirty-two thousand five ninety EXL thirty-six six ten touring thirty-nine four eighty, and the Elite with standard all-wheel drive is going to be a touch under forty-four thousand dollars. And this one, as equipped with the destination charge, comes in at forty thousand one twenty-five. So at the end of the day, the twenty twenty-one Passport continues to thrive in the same ways as it has in the previous model years. Uh, this really is a big, spacious uh, crossover with plenty of space for you and your family. Of course, it is extremely comfortable. It's a good price, and you even have that nice rugged design as well as the extra off-road capability that comes with buying the Passport. So it definitely remains a good choice for you to look at in the midsize crossover segment. Well guys, that wraps up our in-depth review of the 2021 Honda Passport. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below. You know what that's also going to do? It's also going to give you notifications on our most recent content. So why wouldn't you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell? We have tons of automotive content on family vehicles like this Passport all the way to sports cars or, you know, affordable vehicles. We have it all. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.